guys, what's happening? We are back. We're doing a podcast with the hit set Alexander Roth and Kieran Corrupt. If she ain't fucking, she got to go. Yeah. Tell her don't waste my time. Police wanna stop me, search my clothes. What? Tell them don't waste my time. If it ain't money, I ain't involved. No. Tell them don't waste my time. Waste man waffling down my phone. True. Tell them don't waste my time. No, no, no. no. Tell them don't waste my time. Got Tell them don't waste my time. Oh, yeah. Tell them don't waste my time. Tell him don't waste my time, no, no, no Tell him don't waste my time Tell him don't waste my time Tell him don't waste my time Tell him don't waste my time, no, no, no Pray to the Lord, nigga, in this cold world I'm a born sinner, we pour liquor Girl, come over, it's all jigger Chicks wanna holler, can't be my baby mama Cause I don't need that drama Unless she Rihanna most of you assholes are by me I pop a cherry now, she call me papa She asking me what's on my body Versace, Versace, Versace Love. Been that guy since Oxide Neutrino Man. Bound for the, bound for the reload Dickers as big as my ego Bam. Man will give her the D on the dealer So thank you for joining me for the first ever podcast And yeah, so we're going to get straight into it So how are you guys doing? Lit uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah We're, we're, we're good man I'm bored bro, lockdown innit? Simple. Yeah. Well, that's why we're, we're thankful that you invited us for your very first episode because what else we'll be doing and yeah. True, it's been a very tough time at the moment to be fair, like all this non going out. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Obviously bored as well. The one the one time I can get back into wrestling from the injury, this happened, so I'm out again. So it's been a year now since I've been out. Been all right, crazy. mate. Let's talk about, about you, mate. Cheers. All right, mate. Uh, no, I've got to play devil's advocate. I did ask him. Come on, be nice. Be nice. I did ask him. But yeah, so, Kieran, since you're the better one out of the group, I'm going to start with you. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Two shades, sir. Two shades. Whoa. I'm and the PR uh, director, I guess. I'm the compromise. You're, I'm the compromise. Peace, you're the peacemaker in the group, mate. It's all good. You'd be surprised. But go on. Yeah. So, What's yeah, up, so. So tell me a bit about how you guys started. Like, what got you into wrestling? How did you start your careers? So I know what's going to happen. We've done a couple of podcasts before. And Ralph's going to be like, Kieran, you go first. Am I right? You're right, so. Exactly. <laughs> All right. How, how, how I got into wrestling, uh, literally, like, something I've wanted to do for the longest time. Um, did, did, did the higher education course that needed me to get a student loan. And I got, I got a student loan, got a student bursary, and me being a tight ass, I barely spent a thing on it. And when I was 16, the Lance Storm Academy uh, got announced, and I was like, oh, one day I'll go there. And then when I finished my last day of the course, like my final my final thing for my uh, uh, course uh, diploma, the high national diploma, whatever you want to call it, uh, my mom said to me, are you going to start looking for a job now? And the light bulb went off in my head, and I was like, no, oh, you know what? We're in Canada. And she looked at me like, what? I'm like, well, might as well, because, like, well, like it, it's three months, isn't it? So if I get a job, it's going to be hard to, for me to get three months off. Plus, I was in a fortunate position to have the money and the funds to do it, because, uh, you know, it's like, otherwise, where else could I do it? And I always said I wanted to go there, so no time that they're present. So I got an industry that way. And, and yeah, that's been the book bo- boost. Uh, started rolling really from there yeah, so what message would you give to like uh, younger wrestlers coming through about wanting to go abroad um obviously money <laughs> to be fair that's what <laughs> money 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 and motivation because there were people that i know at the uh, when i was training that paid in full and didn't come back off for a couple of days oh, wow. so money and motivation and just be aware of your surroundings because it is hard like it is hard it's very hard, like, you're making a sacrifice. But I think if you can't do that, you've basically just done, like, level one of the crash test. Because if you do want to make it in the industry, there's a lot of travelling, a lot of being away from people, uh, 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 a lot of things that, you know, missing birthdays, missing, missing like, meeting up with friends and all that, which I've, which I've done myself, even on the level I'm in, which I've done myself. Like, I've missed a couple birthdays. I've missed a couple house parties, you know? And people are like, oh, you don't keep in touch no more. It's not because of that, because I'm doing something. So if you can do that, I think I think it should help your mental mind, for, mind frame from it. And I think that's where people should really look at it and 
not take it as a negative rather than you kind of you kind of make yourself callous to it if that makes mm. sense yeah i see exactly what you mean you make a very good point there so yeah so rough so with you i know that me and you started rough about the same time so how did you get into it then uh with me i was always into wrestling from just prior to year 2000 and then i watched the uh, year 2000 rumble um the one with the rock one and stuff and two cool in the rumble and triple h catches jack hardy boys study boys china um chris jericho you know what i mean in the continental and kurt angle of taz and stuff like that and i was just kind of captivated to be honest with you so i was always in the back of mind i was like i could probably like, the more i watched it going from that show onwards the more shows i watched leading up to backlash stuff like that i was like i will kind of it's just sick, like, I would love to be able to do something like this when I was young, when I was a teenager and stuff. Hmm. Never really looked into it until I, like, kind of turned 18. I looked at schools and stuff like that. I was 18 and, you know, from South London, so other stuff distracted me. That, but, that, sorry, it's only when I got to uh, 25, 26, I proper looked into it and, and I found a school which was kind of, not, which was really kind of local. I know, went to the school, he was there, he was there. You know the rest, man. Yeah, so, I went downhill from there. That, that's the way I can test that. I can test that because, like, when I started, there was a there was a FW in South London. And I did it when I was fourteen. But you can, with parents' permission, you can go at fourteen. Hmm. And no, no, no one picked up my calls, and that ain't that ain't like a slight anyone. But legit, no one picked up my calls. So when it's been the when it's the last school academy opened up, and I was like, I'd like to go there one day. And obviously, I'm sure we're gonna touch base later on in the podcast or vodcast, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, We'll touch base on the secondary thing about what we did, but we. But the thing is, the good thing about that one is that we were all there together at the time. In that sense, like so, everyone kind of was like well found basically. Yeah, I see what you mean. So another thing as well, which is interesting to me, like what got you two into wanting to be a tag team together? Um. So, so I had my idea to start a faction when I was at the training school that I was at that was running shows really, 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 really frequently. Um, and I'd done a few things, like I'd been in um, I'd been in a faction, I'd been in a tag team, I'd been the champion and had a storyline and stuff like that. And then I wanted to do something different, I wanted to be in another faction, but I kind of wanted to be like the, if not the leader, I'd be one of the main people in the faction as opposed to like someone in the background. Hmm. But I only wanted it to be like people of colour. Um, so I had a guy called Joe Lightning in mind. I had Kieran Crocs in mind. Um, Joe Lightning decided to leave the business altogether. So that only left Kieran. And with it, so. he, he, got, he, got, he, got, he got the scraps in it. But basically, <laughs> <laughs> no, basically what happened was as well that we were talking about it. And uh, I, I was speaking to a couple of people about it. And at the time, there wasn't much like... Uh, it's, it's, like I said, I, I mentioned many times, as far as the London circuit, there wasn't many tag teams. Uh, and you could say even on the UK. So it was like, I spoke to a couple of people about it, and they reaffirmed what I was thinking. They're like, if you want to get yourself on the scene, be a tag team. And and I've said this many times, you know, uh, what do you call it? I, I feel like, from a London standpoint, with Never Say Die, at least, to, 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 to like, we were on the forefront of that. And and then we went from there. Now at this point, everyone starts doing tag teams, which is you know, and and then tag team circuit became uh, uh, fruitful, like in terms of like it started becoming a big thing. <laughs> and yeah, when we just kept going on it uh, ever since. To be fair, that's that's what happened. Yeah, because I think you guys getting booked a lot, like in different all sorts of companies and all that. So you guys are doing, like smashing it so far. But where do you guys? see yourself in the next like obviously people ask this sort of question all the time where do you see yourself in the next few years like what is your main goal for wrestling like right now my, my, <laughs> I, I think I think I think when it comes to main goal I think I, I can't talk for Roth but I feel like I'm just good or we are just gonna go as far as we can that's how I look at it yeah but there's, there's no goal because fans get Scraps and things don't go to plan, you know what I mean? So, just whatever happens, happens. Yeah, we're, 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 we're well aware of where things can go and the potential of places they could get to, the, the heights and stuff like that. But we're not gonna like, take things for granted, you know what I mean? It's gonna keep doing what we do. And 
it's what happens, happens. As we get older, mate, we become a, a grateful and appreciative of even the opportunities we get. So we're just going to take what we can and try and make the most of it. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We, we, As the young kids say, we move in it. So we do that way. Yeah, so do you think like, maybe going abroad to wrestle as well, like for you both, would benefit you guys future booking-wise? Um, I like, I, I'd like to think that. I don't see why it wouldn't. But that's something on a tick list anyway. Like, we'd love to go abroad and see how the hit set reflects in other countries. You know, because at the end of the day, we are a diverse tag team. Do you know what I mean? We we are very diverse like in terms of who we are, what we are, what we do, and what we say. And I feel like it would be good to see, to get some like direct market research to be like, how do we play across in other parts of the world? It would be, it'll be, it'll be amazing, to be fair. Yeah, I agree. I mean, because, really, uh, Ruff, obviously me and you have like been to Portugal before. We wrestled each other and you wrestled Richie Delight over there as well. So obviously that was a big experience and you've progressed since then. You've gone up and up and up. So, and Karen, obviously you going to Lance Storm Academy, that's helped you a lot. So it'll be good to see if you guys can go abroad. So what I'm going to do is put a little book the hit set right there above my head right now. So get that trending. Like hashtag book the hit set. That means a lot. It's appreciated. Thank you. Where was it? Just there. Just there. Oh, Wait, where was it? Yeah, just just above. Yeah, that's, there we go. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah it's right there, right there. So yeah, so there if you go. guys in the comment section can let like type in hashtag book the hit set. Let's see if we can get that trending and let's go. So another thing as well. So, at what dates have you guys got coming up in future shows? Like, because obviously all this is going to be downhill probably till next year. But have you guys got anything planned for next year yet? Not really. There's no plans, bro. No, no. With, like, we're waiting. Like, just like the rest of the world is waiting right now to see what the next step is. We basically got a P45 in it. Like, <laughs> like we, we, don't, we, we don't know what's going on. Like, we had we had bookings from March, I guess, till June. Like, I read my diary before I came here. I'm like, we all booked till June. But obviously, lockdown changed everything. So, um, nothing at the moment. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, and I hope someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, I don't think it's going to happen until next year. But hopefully, we can pick up pick up the pieces and make it go forward. Yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, obviously, like, you can't do shows in the UK without any crowd there. It'll just be horrible. Exactly. Like, even WWE right now are having to get their own development talent to pretend to be a crowd just for that reaction because otherwise it's too boring. Yep. But, and I feel like as well from a financial standpoint, it ain't going to work. Like, if they're, they're going to start doing events, right, and they've got to have people do social distancing. Unless the venue gives them a discount based on what they have, it ain't going to work. Like, you know, you've got to think of business first and a lot a lot of promoters might not be able to afford that and I get that so it's like so it's hard it's hard to digest I'm not going to lie it's hard to digest because I miss it um, I think we all do we miss it completely like just, you know like like I said it I said it last time go on <laughs> see he misses it see he abuses it the moment you are something get me his chest is red raw you should have seen what we was doing just before this podcast uh, no 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 that's, that's a fight uh, no, not, not that room. That sounds, that sounds, that sounds yeah, weird, yeah, 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 yeah. Keep it PG, yeah. Keep PG, guys. Have you kept the handcuffs? I'm joking. I'm joking. Are they fluffy handcuffs, though? What? Are they fluffy? I don't know what that is. You don't know what that is? I heard you. I don't know what that is. What's fluffy handcuffs? I don't even know what a handcuff is. Yeah, we did. We did. That's stuff that you wear on your suits that goes in the little... Oh, the cufflinks. Yeah, yeah, it's a little cuff thing. Oh, they're called... Oh, they're... Handcuffs because yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it goes across. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Cheers. man, it's like, uh, you yeah, know, we 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 all miss it, it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, and I think, I think, I think it might be good for the industry once you come out of it because obviously, obviously, a lot of people are gonna be able to want to be to see a show. Like, like mm-hmm. I told you the last time, it's like, say, bro, uh, like I told you last time, it's like, um. When someone came to us before Rabino. lockdown and said, like, <laughs> what do you call it? Last time they were like, um, I appreciate you making us forget for a bit. And that's what we yeah. that's what we realized. I'm like, well, you're wrestling. Yeah. That's Shout what... out Brett Meadows, aka Damien, aka Sir Sophie, aka my next husband. What? I thought I was <laughs> I thought next you were next his husband. husband. Next, next. He's a horror. 
horrible guy. He's my, he's my he's my end of life husband. I've got to, you know, still got to play the field a little bit. I resurrect him. Oh, that sounded really. Oh no, no, <laughs> take that back. <laughs> that's really horrible. <laughs> but yeah, but what do you call it? Uh, uh, but like just the fact that we can make him forget for about stuff, and I like the fact that we can do that because we don't look at each other like that. We just like. We go out and perform and make people happy, but when people actually come to us and explain it, it just it just it just hits you even yeah, more. It always takes us back. Always, yeah. It's like, oh, do you know what? I actually forgot that this is how people feel because we're kind of here just to kind of have fun. Then you forget that people are affected by it in all different types of yeah. ways. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it makes sense. So, so as you said, like that's what pleases the fans. But what is your like career highlight so far, like together and s- singles? What do you say is your highlight so far? I think I think especially it hits me more, and I think Rock will agree with us. In terms of the current climate, in terms of what we're seeing right now, wrestle resurgence, uh, everything pattern, courtesy to of Roy Johnson. That's definitely one of them. Um, I was talking to Big T Justice last night, and we were saying like we realized at the time, but I don't think we realized how big of a movement that show was. Especially with the with special, let's be real, but there was some, there was naysayers, but the fact there was naysayers, <laughs> and the fact that we we, we all as a, as a, a whatever a color race creed you were, the fact that we were united to put on a show of that magnitude, we put UK wrestling and the culture of of uh, 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 from a race standpoint, put that on the map because. They started doing. It, they were going to do it in America on many weekend, but obviously lockdown, unfortunately, and didn't have to happen. But no resurgence. Like another company had the idea to yeah. do a whole black show. But I got an email from a guy in the USA that was like thanking Kieran and I for doing what we did and stuff, and just saying like thank to the show and like it didn't open my eyes. I didn't realize that this, that, the other, and rah rah rah. And he wanted to buy like t-shirt stuff. He's on our big cartel. Like he'll try to buy this t-shirt, but like we all sold out and. Like, because we didn't use our big cartel for X amount of time, we kind of forgot that there's even a we forgot that we had a big cartel site. Do you know what I mean? So, but for clarification, we refunded him, and I sent one of us an apology. So don't, don't, we don't, we don't screw up. Was you? Was you you funded him. <laughs> I mean, well, he he apologised. He emailed me. Yeah, so he apologised. I refunded him. So in all, in all, no, but in all seriousness, I'm very flattered that someone from the United States of America, you know, like yeah. may, maybe, maybe, maybe we're too humble. But, but you know how fucking sorry, excuse my language. Sorry, uh, you know how like amazing, how amazing that is. Thank sure. you, us. For I mean, that. It is crazy when you get like the acknowledgement from someone abroad as well, because you think from the UK you're gonna get such and such comments, yeah, yeah, cool. But then when it's different countries, like people from different countries reaching yeah. out to you guys saying, Thank you for what you've done. And so it was a great yeah. thing that you guys did, like because in all fairness, I've not seen an all like black show before, which I thought was really good. Like what I mean by that is like, what, Yeah, so yeah. I think it's really good I that remember, they've done that. that. that- but also remember that show. I know it. I know it got a little bit, a little bit heat with some people. Remember that show? Whether they were in the ring or out of the ring or behind the scenes, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a multicultural show. Mm. No one got stabbed. No one got robbed. Was there mul- was no beef. There was no post code wars. There was no black on black crime. There was none of that crap. It was just love. It was vibes. And again. Yes, there was a big catch-up day for me, but I spoke to Oli Sandler about it, and he agreed with it. And he, he's a guy of, of Caucasian descent, and he was on the show. Like, but people got a bit heated about it, and I'm just like, I'm just like, guys, remember, there's a reason why. But, I mean, now I reckon I'll be like, mm, okay, okay, but there was a reason why that show happened, and I was just grateful to be a part of it, and I thought, I thought it was amazing how a concept that I, I knew. Roy Johnson told me this. A year, a year before what his plan was, and to see it come to fruition, and see how everyone just bonded that day, that that was like that was a shining light in my career. If I'm totally honest, and just being able for myself to be a part of it, and being asked to be a part of it, I thought that was amazing. In closing, everything pattern was a gay old time, but yeah, we wanted to know all the stuff that we remember. So there was everything patterned. Um, I'm, I'm Kieran will probably say yes to this. We won our first tag team championships at um, Entertainment Wrestling Association (UWA) mm-hmm. uh, okay, against uh, Ruckus and OG Scars. Uh, OG Scars and Ruckus, the Element they call themselves. They're out of the Element because we won, you see. Anyway, 
So in promo mode, um, there was that moment. Um, I wrestled Doug Williams one on one. I'm someone that used to watch TNA, so I knew exactly who he was. That's right. That's when I met him. Actually, it's, it's kind of weird how it comes full circle when I come to the ring. Yeah, uh, Doug Williams seminar. That's when I first met him. It's fair. Yeah, the first yeah, day I met him. You was there? Was you not there as Orcus? No, I weren't. I arrived on uh, Wasteman. May the fourth. I think. Wasteman. Yeah, May the fourth oh, was, was my first one. Like, like, is that the next week or the week after? Then literally like. Because I, when I when I first went, it was either the end, I can't remember what it was. It was the end of April or it was the start of May. It was one of those two. So yeah. when, whenever you must have been the week after. But yeah, that's the that moment. I've got um, Portugal with you. I've got Italy defending the new Force Wrestling Championship, which was great. I enjoyed that. I had a great trip. I was treated like a, a king. So I really enjoyed that. Um, what else have we got? Oh, what else have we got? I've been a champion at New Force Wrestling for like 20,000 years. Love that. Um, UKPW, longest reigning champion in history. Amazing. Love that so much. Um, so thankful for that. Uh, what else have we got? Did, mate, there's a, there's a few things. There's that time. Oh, my days. That time. Yeah. I wasn't there, but you might have saw it. Remember that time when I super kicked you right in your ginger face, Chris? <laughs> Love it. Love it. Oh. Do, you remember, do, you remember, do, you remember, do you remember that time the battle roll? And please, guys, Chris is literally our friend, so don't be giving us heat on what you mean about this. But when Roth stopped the whole battle royal, and he was like, get the ginger! <laughs> and we were we 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 like, we like, oh, Jesus, what you were uh, saying? I, I, remember, I faintly remember that. Just from getting a bunch of hits. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know what show that was or what year that was, but I got um, the memory of me even doing that's kind of vague. But do you, do you know what it was? It was at uh, it was at a, a New Molden venue. I remember that for a fact. It was at uh, New uh, Molden. Oh, what in the, the Green uh, Building? The Green oh, Building. And Graham wasn't Spike. that, wasn't Spike that a show where we had to do tag matches and it, no singles match? The tag matches and whoever wins goes. Yeah, into yeah, yeah it was that, that one. Yeah, yeah, it was because I remember. Yeah, I remember. No, it was that one. But like in terms of my bit singles wise. Um, what can I think about? I mean, I mean, there's a lot, man. Like singles wise, like I mean, obviously UKPW into regional, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, feuding with Hollywood, like to me, he was like my sting to my Vader. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. he had, me there. like he was like he was he was something else uh, as a performer. But I loved it. Like I don't know why. Maybe I'm a glutton for punishment. But uh, who else was there? Me cashing in Ross. At the oh, highway, <laughs> we, we we got them that day. We got them that day. Uh, I even was so me confused. Him, it's weird. Even me put even me putting rough for a table at the last UKPW show. Like we left it on. Like, technically, like even though like, we said it's all business, which it is because now we're, we're sitting next to each other, so it's fine. It's all business. You might be a bit annoyed about it, but it's all business because oh, my back hurts. Yeah. Well. It's all business, but the fact that we left out on a season finale, that's how I felt it was. Because And uh, there's a lot of things, even like being able to do stuff like outside of uh, the UK scene, like overseas and all that. Doing Malta, that was really cool. They, you know, a shout out to BW, they took care of us there. Like, that was a really good experience. Like, I proper, I proper felt like a superstar, you know, I'm not. You know what? Saying BW, I really, really, really enjoy their um their charity shows, the one in the Mitchum. Yes, Mitchum, yes. Park, Adam, on it, and, uh, Abbey yes. Jones, they're always really, really fun. So yeah, they're sick, man. They're yeah. sick, and we're gonna get to doing them this year now. So that's a bit yeah, a bit the, rubbish. The, the thing is, the thing yeah. I put a disclaimer: there's a lot of people that uh obviously right now you're asking on the spot, but there's a lot of people, a lot of promoters, a lot of things have happened that I probably won't say on this podcast. So, but remember. I do remember, just not right now, but I do definitely, like, deep down, as weird as it sounds, it sounds a bit sarcastic, but obviously, like, deep down, I remember, like, this stuff, because, again, during lockdown, you've got a lot of time to think, and it's like, mm. it's like, you, you definitely appreciate a lot more, like, it's a, I'm going to lie, it's emotional, because, like, you, like, as a performer, and what you do as a performer, and what you want to do as a performer, you don't realise how much it affects others, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And True. that's something I'm missing right now. And he's missing right now. If I, if I, I, I always say I won't talk for Riz or Roth, should I say? But would he call it? Um, I'm sure he can attest to that. Yeah, Man, I can't. Be worse today, isn't it? I'm proper like on PR mode, isn't it? Like I'm on like good morning, good morning Britain or something. Do you know what I mean? Well, <laughs> hopefully we get as much viewers as that. That would be nice. But it's a start. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no so talk, talk about promotions and that. Like you said about BEW. Like I remember you winning their title. To be fair. 
which I thought you were going to mention. Yeah, and the pop you got. He's drawing you out, bro. Well, we, we came we came with our own belts and it was sanctioned by BW. But we did defend them and win them. No, you talk, you talk about your singles title. Oh, my singles title. Yeah, the title. main title. <laughs> yeah, longest reigning tag team champions and the most tag team champions at BW as well, British Empire Wrestling. But, but, but. My, my singles title, that, that was... That shouts was, at Declan, shouts at Tim, don't know. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was weird because I, I think I found out on the day and I was shocked. It was a, it was a battle royal. It was that like Royal Rumble night. Oh my god, I was in that match. Yeah, you was, and that's that's when. Oh my god, it was me and you at the end. Uh, no, me, you, and Matt Walker at the end. Remember, because I, uh, ac- I accidentally eliminated you. Disrespectful. Yeah. Accidentally but, on purpose. No, like, it wasn't. It really wasn't. Like, <laughs> are, you, are you seeing the pattern here? Yeah, yeah. puts me through a table. Accidentally eliminates me. Like it's all mad. Tries to ju- admit, pretends to jump you at guy, ACW. I'm a jealous guy. It's fine. <laughs> I'm happy. But we we all get one thing. Like when it comes to title, it means more money in it. So we're all about money here. Like look look look. Like we 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 still we still we still share the same bond in terms of like money. Like we all exchange stuff. You know what I mean? But no seriousness. Uh, BW was very flat. Like real talk. That was like. And I remember. I remember when I went out. Uh, I was very. I doubt. I think deep down, I downplay myself a lot more than I should. And when I went out there. And I heard the the roar from the crowd when I came out. Like that threw me off. Yeah. When I heard my music, I remember I remember uh, Theodore Powers when I w- walked back from the going, "Raw, you got a pop, you know." I'm like, "You probably say raw, but basically raw, you got a pop." And I was like, R- "I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think of it like that." And it's like when I won it, and and the ovation happened. Like, like even like yeah, you don't really. It's hard to explain. Like. You know, it's like when things throw you off, like I'm more for awkwardness, I'm more for randomness, but in them moments, hey, you don't really know how to take it. But remember, you're a performer. you got to go with what the fans are telling you. And to me, I'm like, why, why are they cheering me? Like, it, it takes a while to process in, but that was a good day that was. And uh, I, I appreciate um, British Empire Wrestling having the faith in me in that time to do what they thought I could do and I hope I delivered. You know, obviously when I when I when I obviously lost the belt to Damien, I feel like we, we, we served our purpose and I served my run. And but I was, like like I said, I'll just I'll just great for the opportunity. Like anyone that gets anyone takes a chance on me, like I'll try to do my best to to, to, to do what I can do. Cause it's very it's just in modern society as much as we all like like in this movement of like being kind to everyone and be understanding and all that, it's very rare for for people to take a chance on you. And for for that, it was like cool. I I I won't forget that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was gonna say because that was like the first chance you got. I think first chance that I know of that you had as the main champion of a company. Because I know yeah you've had uh, main championships for quite a few years now. Yeah, so the fact is that you've had so many championships before shows how much like you've grown since you first started as well. So I think Kieran getting a chance at BW, I think shown that he can also do what you do. For example, because people No no, but that's what some people think maybe I don't know. You know, All right, Chris. Chris, what have you, what have you done, and how much is going to cost me? Like, why are you being so, why are you being so nice? No, I know you're saying. I'm trying to boost you, here, man. Saying, <laughs> I get what you're saying because you're basically like, not, maybe, maybe you're not saying, but obviously the stigma out there has always been. Yeah. When there's a tag team, there's always one person in the tag team that's always like the not not, not necessarily better than support his partner, an actor, support but he's actor. always like the, the the main person. But the thing is, we're a tag team. There's no main. We're both the fucking main. So exactly, that, right. that's I mean, what I was trying to get across. So I just put it really badly. I, I would, I would hug him, but we're trying to follow short distancing as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where's my face mask? I've got it somewhere. <laughs> it is so, somewhere. So yeah, for traveling, for traveling. Yeah, don't worry. I tested him before he came to my to my yard. It's fine. Don't worry. I did. Really <laughs> but I tested yeah, him. It's all good. I mean, we're we're all, we're all around at the moment, so it's fine. Things seem, seem things hopefully seem to be easing down, which is good. So. That's a plus. Yeah. So, yeah. so everyone yeah. watching, make sure you just stay home, stay safe, and don't listen to Boris Johnson. Just stay home. Wash some hands. Cover that face. And what, what annoys me, if you didn't wash hands before, bruv, what were you doing before that? Do I was, because obviously you know where I work in retail, so... Exactly. No, same here. I work in a warehouse. 
So. Yeah, I work oh, sorry, now we're full time wrestlers. So. What are you talking about? I've got contracts. I've got contracts. I've got contracts. Yeah. <laughs> so talk about contracts. Um, so where is the like and promotions? So basically, what would you rate as your top three promotions that you've worked for, and why? I uh, don't do that, Chris, man. Because then people, the thing is, there's a lot more. There's a lot more. I can't. I, can't, I actually can't pick a right. top three. All right. Cool. Let me see. No, 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 no. Let top me... three I've worked for. Hmm. Top three. All right. All right. How do, how do we do? I'll give you a top five instead. Yeah, sure. Top five is good. In no particular order, because I don't know how people are about orders already. True. Place, if you're listening to this, place yourself where you think you should be in it. But in my mind, and as I said, in no particular order, <laughs> cheeky, cheeky buggers, Sacrifice Pro, United Kingdom Professional Wrestling. Apollo Championship Wrestling, Entertainment Wrestling Association, and number five, number five, I said number five is, is, everyone that ever booked us and we really appreciate it. British you. Empire <laughs> Wrestling. All right, going number five, but to me, to me, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be a, a bank account. Uh, an accountant, sorry, not bank account, an accountant right now, and consolidate. Oh, look at me. We, we use big words. You know what, actually? It's hard because I forgot about World War Wrestling. And as soon as I thought of them, I was like, they're definitely a magic Look, look Chris, so. Chris, imagine top five, yeah? Mm -hmm. We're just going to consolidate, big words again, like I said for us, consolidate, because people don't think we can talk like that. And everyone that ever booked us, everyone that took a chance on us, everyone that gave us the opportunity. That's a good answer. Bob Drunkle, Bob Drunkle, Fanny Gerard. There, there we go. go. If, you want a, if you want a good review, Fanny. Fanny. Yeah. Do you know who Fanny is? Of course not. I know who Fanny is. Course, but when, I think of, when I think about the word Fanny, yeah, you sure you know who I think are? about like being really hot and Fanny myself. So. Oh, you're talking about that? Oh, oh, we'll, we'll stop. So, moving on. Chris. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, on that sort of topic of like five things. So, for example, if there's five wrestlers in the UK right now you could wrestle. That you haven't wrestled before, who would you and why? Only only in the UK, yeah. Yeah, no NXT guys or WWE guys or um, AEW, Kieran. What about NXT UK no? Oh, no, none of them. Oh, yeah. no, no, no one who's okay. signed no one who's signed to a no contract. contract. Yes, no contract. No contract. contract. Cool, no contract. Alright, five, yeah? Five. Singles or tag, what are we doing? Singles? Uh you can do well. Tag one, I'll allow you to do like together. The tag one would be joint and the singles yeah. would be ourselves. All right, yes. do your singles, if you mind. No, I need time to think. All right, old GMO. <laughs> Have you wrestled? Well, you wrestled uh, before. Yeah, but in a tag match, he ain't, he ain't got his ass spanked by me in the singles yet. He needs to. So, Good point. old GMO, oh, Orange Juice Overlord, as I like to call him. Um, me and Conor Mills always seem to have like this, this big gay love in the ring. Which is a lot of physicality and a lot of hard hitting. So I'm just <laughs> fight. I want to fight him again. Plus, he's doing bits and pieces now. He's been doing bits and pieces for time, but he's up there now. And I want to see if I can hang him. I, I know I can. I'll spank him. Give a damn about his cane roll. Is it corner fucking mills twat? Um, <laughs> <laughs> who else we got? Do you know what? Let me get, get let me get some hustle Malone. Let me get a little bit of hustle Malone. Yeah, I wrestled him before one on one year, but it was a, it was a shenanigans type situation and this is just do some one-on-one -on -one action he brings his mask I bring my mask who to wins the match and we'll drink out of a flask or right after you like that Rhymer um, I mean, do okay, now we might as well just do like whoever you okay. we might as well just okay. do whoever you wrestle okay. regardless so if it's haven't or not we'll just do it whoever okay. in the UK awesome. we should talk to him. listen to him. <laughs> uh, two more OJ Mills Malone Me. I ain't wrestled for him banks yet Ooh. Yeah, yeah he's on my I've list. got Russell Warren back here, yeah, eight seven and all that, but I will spank him differently. Um, last one. Do you know what? Do you know what? Last one, number five, Danny Black. I'll go for Danny Black. That's a good chance. I'll That's go for the little there. I'll go for him. I'll go for the the, the dude of that fear or, or whatever it is, because I don't remember because I want to spank him so much. Whenever I think of his sayings and his his, his slogan, like, I just think about spanking him so I don't forget them. But Danny Black, 
that kid with the comic book free shirt. Are we are we going by uh, spank him? Are we going by who we never faced before? Uh, no, we're just doing like whatever, whatever now. Uh, like, singles wise, singles wise, OJMO. This I was gonna say. Oh, I was gonna say a bad word there. You're lucky. You're lucky. I said this guy right. Here. This guy. Right here. <laughs> Uh, me. Um, James Mason. I know. I don't know if he counts because he works behind, behind the scenes of NXT UK. But uh, I was James Mason. Re- if you can book him in the UK, then uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, cool. James Best. One more. Oh, I need the fifth one. Oh, that's gonna be a hard one. Know, James. James is pretty fun to work to. Fair in the singles match. It's very easy. Uh, I, 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 I bet I can tell you right now. I know. I know his number five is. Who's that? Say yeah, no, Chuck Mambo. Cause I meant to have a match with him. That's a good shout, actually. Thank you, Chuck Mambo. I've got, Jesus, ooh, I've got a bit, I've got a bit woo in there. <laughs> but what do you call it? Uh, Chuck Mambo, because I never, I never had a chance to actually wrestle one on one. I was meant to. Like a lot of these matches that I wanted to have end up for unforeseeable circumstances to be cancelled. So there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, uh, chapters in my career that hasn't really been opened. In terms of the book, the top five thing is I, I hate that because yeah, there's, there's X amount of people, Tommy Carl on the wrestle him, Carl Kingsley one on one. There's loads of people. Up Warren Banks was one of them, but you gave me five. This one I don't like. Roy stuff. Johnson and rematch. Roy, he was one of them, but that's seven. The tag team match Kit Set versus Warren Banks and Roy Johnson. Is that was me. eight. So like, that's not going on forever, mate. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I it's, know it's, I mean? it's a hard question. I, I legit just went with the top five yeah. in my mind. Yeah, like, NIC, tag NIC, team, definitely. Hunter Brothers, tag team, Hooligans, tag team. Who else we got? I want to rest the main event, which is Charles Crowley, and Adam Ralph. I want to smash them up as well. Overseas, yeah. uh, LAX, Briscoe Brothers. Bro, I hate this whole five thing. There's so many. But I'm, days, bro. I'm just going by what my first five things come in my mind, but it doesn't mean that's all in my mind. It's just what you you can think of the time. Exactly. So okay, so what about got, now? You've got the tag team one now to do, the top five tag teams. Tag teams? Yeah. Well, I kind of I let two of mine already. The... Um, I'm thinking about the, the the ladies then, you know, because we ain't said any ladies' names yet. And I will, I will also say spank, but I'm not going to use that word just in case it gets misconstrued. But I'll smash up these ladies as well. Just, just, just let them in. I'll smash them up. Not, not, it's not smash them, <laughs> smash them up. <laughs> just, like the, just like the men. So the Medusa Complex can get this hit set work. Who else we got as tag team? Uh, the Sacrifice Pro ones. Oh. Mia Cortez. Their tag team, I come with um, Evie is a, is a tag team with her. I come with they're called, but two ladies that are in the main event, they'll get beat up as well. We've got Nightshade and Jade beat up. Uh, you just get, I'll just tombstone power driver, all of you, every single one of you. Tombstone power driver, uh, pop up power bomb, one, two, three, I hope. And probably, hopefully, not to Canadian Destroyer from any of these women, because that's probably what would happen in it, let's be honest. Put it me that I'll take you. I guess so slow. That would be me. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, Go on, mate, honestly, there's, there's loads. There's, there's too many. There's no top five. There's just... Feed me more. We're just happy anyone that wants to, like, get into battle with us or work with us. The tycoon, I want to beat him up as well. Uh, yeah, that, well, that, that's, a, that's a guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> the list is on I love, love, shout, shout out to the tycoon still. Shout out to the tycoon. Like, the list is endless. Though, Even so. the announcers can get it. Hmm? The announcers can get it. The commentary team can get it. Slick Lombardo, here you go. Announcer, he can get this work. Who's on commentary at Sacrifice? Oli, Oli. Uh, uh, I don't know why I can't remember anyone's names. I'm drinking, but you know what I'm talking about. Before you drink Rabina. Who is Rabina? Well, we haven't okay. we have eaten all day. Extra sugar. Oli. Springs. He'll get that work yeah, too. That's it. Yeah. TJ, is it TJ? Yeah, I think it is. Mate, listen, teach, teach, teach. Man, like big teach. Right. Teach, innit? Who's a big teach? I don't even know why I come up with these guys' names. These are guys that I see all the time. You know, it's lockdown. really, really bad. It's lockdown. That's what it's done to us. We're yeah, just, we're just, mine's going crazy. They can get that lockdown. work. <clears throat> the light team that do the lights, they can get that work too. Audio, audio. They can get that work too. Uh, staging. They can get that work too. Editors. They can get that work Two uh, uh, guys that rent the building for for us. Absolutely getting that work. The landlord, the work. Yeah, but that's it. That's basically it, bro. But them, all those names, absolutely. There's names that I've def hundred percent would have would have forgotten, didn't mention, and stuff like that. They can get that work yeah. too. I want to fight everyone. 
Fair. I really don't. Like, I just want to go there, get my, get my money and go, really. But... He's lying. He wants to fight as well. Uh, okay. That's why he takes the big bumps. So. I've got to sacrifice myself. Shout out to Sacrifice Bro. Shout out to Sacrifice Bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, I'm a Sacrifice Pro wrestler, fam. You get me? Yeah. I mean, I've seen them doing quite well before this lockdown, though. I mean, what, are you guys still tag team champions? Or... No, we're not. But we're, we're going we're gonna to get them soon. Don't worry. After lockdown, we'll get Sorry, them. Sorry, mate. It's Saints of Sacrifice. Said it there. But the, in all credit, though, what they do, like, the thing with, with the current industry right now, we're all jaded, isn't it? So everyone thinks like there's some, some ulterior motive. Yeah. And the one thing that Sacrifice proved to me that they actually do do what they do for charity. We have charity reps there. Yeah. We see certificates. Yeah. And it's like, and it's a shame that there's other promotions that do it, not for that reason. And it's good to see someone actually doing it for the right cause. Yeah. So for that reason, you know, as much as my... Sacrifice will always be in the top three. Yeah, so much as people might think, whether you and it's not because of that reason, it's because of the it's because of the people. Pe- people help the locker rooms really good, and yeah, that's of, literally it. So. And it's for a good cause. So good people, good cause. Fuck it. Sorry, yeah. excuse my language again. Sacrifice does look pretty good to fair. What I've seen of it, I've never been unfortunately, but I will try to do that. Thanks, man. You guys never invite me on your road trips. No space to the car, mate. <laughs> are, you, are you trying to call me fat now? Sorry, mate, can't fit you in with this merch and all these titles. <laughs> I mean, I've got a pretty big title when I got merch up there, so we're up there somewhere. So I am ready when you are. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Yo guys, right, cool. we are back from our break, so we just had a quick break there, so just to let you guys get all the information in, what we went through. So yes, yeah, so we're going to have some very good points. So another thing I want to ask you guys is, so far you guys have wrestled for a few years now together, what is your top matches that you've had like against certain opponents, as a tag team mainly? There's, there's a couple, like... There's probably there's a couple that we we'll forget, so uh, we'll go with two unlimited uh, rebellion, and I think Kip Sabian and Brad Slayer was one at World War Wrestling. That was a that was a that was a very unique experience because it went so smoothly, especially for people of their name like Brad Slayer being on World of Sport, hmm. Kip Sabian now being in AEW. That was cool. Uh, there were guys that there were guys that that, that took us to task, but. Uh, in the sense of like, we made it gel. It was a good challenge. It wasn't a bad challenge. You, you can get challenged every day of your life, but some are good, some are bad. That, some are bad. Some that was a good challenge in my opinion. Those, those are my top three. If you're asking. Yeah, mine's the same. It's the element, the element. Two unlimited, the rebellion, uh, lost Palominos, the sacrifice. That's one. There's too many, Chris. That's what I'm saying. There's too many. The NIC. That one match we had to give off. And I see, yeah. And I see one of them. Like, do you know what I mean? There's too many. There's too many to name. I can't I think I think next time we do if we ever do a podcast you again, no more top top anything. I'm just going by what I remember. I mean, that's he, fair enough. I can't blame you there. I mean, it is hard to pick a top five I mean top three, top five in a short space of time, you know? It's a bit hard. Yeah. I don't think I could name people that I would want to face it and top matches. No, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Like, I'm just going by what I can remember the first time. It's kind of like the old psychological cards in it, where they're like, oh, what does this picture remind you of? Do you know what I mean? It's like, I'm just going by what I can remember. But, but apart from that, there's a lot more. I wristed it, like, and I see Los Palominos. Uh, there's a lot more. Uh, Lion Kings at Russell Resurgence, we were saying earlier. That was one of them. There's a lot, man. There's, there's, there's a lot. Like, you can't just put it on one. I mean, if you ask for a top three, um, I'll give you my top three, but remember, I'm going by top three by memory. It's kind of like exams, isn't it? Mm. Like, are you really learning, or are you just going by memory? Do you know what I mean? That's why I look at it. I, I can't, I can't pinpoint. Remember, we've been this for five, six years, uh, so so it's like there's a lot that we've had to do, and there's a lot that we've had to perform. There's a lot we had to like uh, uh, perform with others. So it's hard. It's a, like if you tell me my top three moments, I'll give you top three moments, but it's not gonna be my actual top three moments. Mm. I'll be like off air, I'll be like, Oh I forgot to say that bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 
So, but actually, no, you were saying top three tag match earlier. I think I think the hardcore tag match that we did at Anarchy, see? See, I forgot about that. The hardcore tag match. True. I mean, if you want, we could always ask that question at the end, if you want. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> we'll keep it as organic as possible, mate. But yeah. I'm just saying, from a, from, a, from a performer standpoint, it's very hard to ask them to, like, top three, top ten, top five, whatever, like, it's, it's not like we can go by the uh, 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 British chart graphics when it comes to who made number one on the top UK list. It's a lot different than that, you know what I mean? True. So, another thing as well, like, since you guys have been a tag team for a few years now, what advice would you give to up-and-coming tag teams who are looking to start one, thinking of starting one? What would you say for them? Train together. Talk to each other. Listen to one another. Believe in one another. That's it. Train, believe, listen, be aware. Um, to add to that, with everything I, I, he said I agree. Um, start together with a plan on staying together, if that makes sense. Because whilst me and Roth also have a singles career, some might be better than others, um, we still manage to maintain what he just said. Like, like the whole listen to each other mon monologue, not in a room, I didn't mean like that, but you know what I'm saying. But it's like at the same time, it's like if you're if you're if you're gonna do it, like we we did it because we were told like if you want to get your foot in the door, try to do that. But we didn't do it just for that. We did it because he wanted to be a tag team. So it's, it's like a married married couple. Fuck it, it's a married couple thing. If you're gonna do it, uh, excuse my language again. If you're gonna do it. Do it and stay commit to it. Yeah, and co just commit, just commit because because at the end of the day, like he could have went away a long time ago and went his own way. I could have went a long way. How we look at it? Some people might say he would have succeeded. I wouldn't have succeeded. I would have succeeded. He wouldn't have succeeded. There's so many you can look at. It. But at the end of the day, we have the civilized citizen. That's me. We got the Wolf of Wall Street. Then we got the Hitset. We are we are a brand of subsidiaries, subs subsidiaries. Sorry, subsidiaries. And I'm like, if you're gonna do it. Stick, stick to it. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. like, that's what I learned. That's the only advice I give to tag teams. If you're going to do it, stick to it. Don't just do it because of like, flavour of the month. True. But, that's a good because, point. Uh, it does take a while to get a tag team going because I remember I tried to sign a tag team once or twice and it's never fully worked out because didn't do it long enough, weren't practising all the time, weren't as like gelled together, if you know what I mean. I, com I compare, like, this is the best example I'll give. I compare me and Roth to the outsiders, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. So they both they both did their own thing, but they were a tag team still. If that makes sense. Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna look at a tag team, but also if you want to do it a single, look at uh, the outsiders is the best example. Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. And if you if you don't know who they are, you'll be surprised. Wouldn't know. Do your research and you understand why I say that. True. You got you got to be good at singles. To be good as a tag, I think, personally, you have to have two good singles wrestlers. Because, for example, people say Marty Janae and Shawn Michaels, they say Michaels was a lot better. But Janae wasn't bad in the ring, but just wasn't as good and clean as Michaels was. I so. think I think that's I think that's a term that gets thrown around too mm. often. The way I see it, like when it comes to Janae and all that, look at I look at it like this. I rather if people are gonna say he's a has been, I'd rather be a has been than I never was. True. But I think the criticism for the genetic is a bit uncalled for as well. Like it's not not just that. I mean, for the for example, young wrestlers coming through, you have people other people saying, "Oh, you're the genetic the tag team." It's like it puts too much, it puts pressure on people, and people start panicking, goes to their heads. That's another thing I'd probably give advice to younger wrestlers trying to get into it. Don't listen to anyone you know, who says like that. You know what? You know what? I tell them, and I, I will swear on this one. And I probably have to do. Don't give a fuck. There we go. True. I'm pretty sure you guys... Because, because look, 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 look at us now. Like He's like, been like um, champions of so many promotions, but we're still together doing the tag team, so it don't bother me. And, and at the end of the day, but look at like this. If you want to be selfish, but in a nice way, like you got to look at it like this. We're all business at the end of the day. If him... The thing is, what people don't realise, let's say let's say he gets like... like If I'm going to look at it like this, let's say my guy over here gets to a certain standpoint, and I'm still tagging with him, I'm gonna get the rub off him anyway, so I, why why would I complain? Fuck it, why not? Yeah, I see. And exactly. you know, you know that anyway. It's like fuck it, you're you're on top. Like 
but but we know each other on a personal level, so I'm like, cool, let me let me let me let me let me not in that way, but it's like let me ride a cocktail for a little bit. I might as well get some exposure from it. And I'll do the same for him. Do you know what I mean? So, so I've got if sort of like this, sharing his care, basically. Let, let me finish uh, I'm going on a tangent here. Sorry. <laughs> but let me finish this. Like this guy's multi talented, right? So he can act, he can dance, he can talk, he can do music. So if on the one in a million chance I get signed and they told me I want to do WrestleMania entrance. I'll be like, I've got someone that can do the performance. <laughs> I'll choose him. So yeah. it's almost like looking out for each other. That's another thing. Look out for each other, man. Like, there's not a fucking uh, like one one win situation. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's what I would do. And I like to think I don't know. I like to think if the shoe was on the other foot, it would be the same way. Okay. And by its face, it probably wasn't. But yeah. But I'll do that anyway. Like, I mean, as it, was there a story where you had to, like, for example, someone gave you the choice if you want to go singles or a tag, like before a show? Oh, oh right, that, yeah, prime example. It's happened before, man. It's, uh, it's happened many times, but it was like I wish you, I wish you did set because from from a personal level, a professional level, I feel like that mud sticks, and I feel like I'm better in that situation. Remember, I started singles. He started a single. He had the vision. I want to continue the vision. He wants to continue the vision, and I want to go with that vision. So it's very back and forth. Do you know what I mean? Mm. The fact, the fact, the fact. I look at it like this. You look, remember, you know us personally, like yeah. off the record. Well, I say off the record, but you're. On. Everyone knows that we all know each other quite well. Yeah. So you could ask Alexander Ross to do it separately. You could ask Kieran Corrupt to do it separately. But why, why, why do you ask us to do it together? It says it all right there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Like, I think you're both strong together. Then, obviously, strong individuals, but together it makes it even better. You just bounce off each other so well. A conversation can get going. Wrestling, for example, you just bounce off each other really well. Yeah. Send the, matches. Next, send the next question to Roth because I went too long for that one. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, Roth, since Kieran went on one, in a way, <laughs> I'll say, what is your most interesting road story? Well, I've got... I'm just <laughs> You've got a load, I know. <laughs> There's no interest in road stories, bro. Not really. Not, not, not really. It's just like a lot of pit stops and conversations, really. There's nothing less like, oh, my God, that happened on the road. There's, there's nothing like that happened so far. It's just long journeys up and down the motorway. Um, people spending time on their phone, doing their social media posts and that, promoting the event and stuff like that, shooting promos in the backseat. Um, going through matches in their head <laughs> out loud, uh, the, 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 um, deciding what food we're going to eat at the pit stop. Uh, the, no, I mean it's really it, mate. There's not really nothing else. I, I agree. I, I agree and disagree with Roth because I think that there were times where like we had a little like like in the media we call sound bites. So I'm going to call it visual bites, but like things like <laughs> the, like. Like, if you ever get in the if you ever got the road with Tycoon, it's always sort of hilarious. Do you remember the car thing where you looked over? I remember a lot of car things with Tycoon. Yeah, see, and and the time and the time when he dropped him off, he didn't see this one. The time where what do you call it? A guy was sleeping on the wheel, and Tycoon had to swerve. <laughs> like, you know, we we be, yeah we go multiple stop service stations where in certain areas it's a bit iffy. You know, we've done all that, but and it's funny because I was talking about someone today, and I'm like. You know what, right? Even if this, if even if things stops today, if wrestling just stops today for all of us, I'm thinking, you know what? I've got stories that I can take with me for the rest of my life mm. that people can't ex- people will never understand, but will understand at the same time because it's like because they've not been put in that situation. Like traveling the road is a very unique experience. True. It's obvious, you know. We've been on the road, me and you, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was, that was quite funny actually. We've had a neon defender. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a good laugh. Shouts at the neon defender, man. Like, man. Like, yeah. There's also a story I have as well. It's like from the time we was in Portugal in on in a taxi, going from uh, was it the where was it? Was it the nice hotel? Yeah, it was. We went to the hotel, checked in, dropped our bags off, came back out. You were, <laughs> you haven't ate all morning. <laughs> Bear in mind, oh, this is midday. I, I, feel, I feel bad for you. I apologize <laughs> in advance. Fuck, you know. I mean, <laughs> why would you apologize? You wasn't nice talking about me. Yo, I know what you like without no food, bro. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this was midday, for example. It was like 12 and 1 o'clock. And the taxi driver 
was like, Can he was like, so R- Ruff was like, stop, oh, stop here, it's fine. Carries on driving, stop here, fam. Then he just getting more and more annoyed. <laughs> then the fact after that as well, we got out, I was like, I need some food. Went, went into the, uh, where the show was, I spoke to Red, where, where can we get food? Uh, there's some places down the road, tons and tons of cake shops. Bare cake shops, no bacon, no eggs, no nothing, just cakes. I'm like, brother, it's, it's morning, I want my brekkie. Where's the, where's the cereal? Where's my cocoa pops? Where's my wheat bits? And they're selling cakes. I was so angry, I'll never forget that. <laughs> Which is why I said I apologize to you, Chris. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Man, I, had to, I had to go, I had to do, do my own thing because I'm going to find food somewhere else. So I found these weird. I forgot what they're called. The beef little burger things. I don't know. It's like the steak burger things. Pasty? Pasty? No, 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 it was like a literally a grey piece of meat in between two buns. Oh fuck that! I wouldn't want to It was to try actually that. really gray, nice. It was really grey piece of meat. Grey though. Mm. It was like a grey white. Lovely. Sounds amazing. I bet you got a tape one right now because of it. To be mm. fair. Most like it. We're shooting for a week after the holiday. Um, but yeah, like, like, not, not, yeah, but like, yeah, like the road, the road's really unique. Like, have I told you about the karaoke bar story? I'm sure I told you that. No, but that'll be a good story to tell. So, <laughs> <laughs> I should really care what I say right now. So, we were like, okay, when I did the show in Malta, uh, we did, we did, we did, I, I, I put as big as possible, same thing I'm really saying. I'll tell you off the air, but we did a karaoke bar thing and. No one was like serving me drinks. Like no one, no one. Like I'm thinking, what the fuck's going on here, isn't it? And then finally they do, but but then one of the Maltese guys were like, "I'll buy it for you." And Brett was there that day, uh, and Brett was like, Brett knew something was up, and he wasn't happy about it. And then Brett comes back to England, finds out someone that has a house there, and finds out that basically the the karaoke where went is basically borderline run by mafia. Oh, and I'm there. shit. Yeah. So I'm there. I'm there being like, bruv, like, you know what I'm like? I'm like, bruv, like, why are you not serving me? Like, come on, hurry up. You know what I mean? Like, I'm getting annoyed. So <laughs> my only clerk to being, uh, as people like to say, a uh, road man is, 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 is that really? And I was like, well, there's more, more clouts, but in terms of uh, a, uh, a perception, that's my claim to fame. I, I got in the I got in the face of a karaoke bar that runs by a mafia. I'm surprised you didn't I'm end still... up with a horse's head on your bed that night. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. It was it was actually looking like because I'll tell you some of the stuff there, but looking back on it, it was a dangerous situation. Yeah, to be fair, if, if you don't know, you don't know. So, for example, it's one of those sort of things where you're doing your thing, and afterwards you find out you're like, oh shit, did I actually do that? Yeah, no, it's one of them ones. So the road, the road, the road's very um, enlightening, if I put it to a fair. I might even tell you to edit that bit out, to be fair. I probably shouldn't have said that, but yeah. It's, it's on that it note, shouldn't be too bad, to be fair. Well, I'll let you know when when, when you edit, but yeah. what do you call it? All right, so yeah, uh, basically, uh, yeah, the road, the road can be unique. Very. I mean, there's so many stories we can go about on the road. So, all right. For example... You guys got signed from WWE. Who would you want to face first, as in like your first debut match? Hey, it does. As a tag team. New Day. Yeah. Usos. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Usos. Uh, Usos, yeah. I mean, yep. didn't you guys have no a bit? Did you guys have a bit of uh, Twitter issues with them at all in the past? Not, 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 not with them. Not with them personally. No, we didn't. One of their relatives as a worker uh, saw uh, uh, on a, us on a poster. Uh, I actually had the hit set shirt, but he saw Rizzy with a day one thing shirt, and they wrote the uh, day one thing question mark, and that's all that ever happened. Oh, was it, mate? Uh, that's what it was. Oh, sorry. Right. I mean, at least it's a bit more. The only reason, the only reason day one thing exists is because people were saying that. So, oh. So, hit set, you remind us of the Usos. So, I was like, okay, then, so I'm going to make money off this then. That was literally it. There's no more, there's no less, there's no conspiracy. It's literally people thought we were the Usos. They were like, oh, you, you remind me of the Usos because, I mean, who else would we remind them of? True. So, we took the initiative. I was like, all right, then, so it's not a day one ish, it's day one ting because I'm from the UK, I'm from London, and we say ting. 
True. You get me. So there it is. So do you guys sell shirts on sale? Say that again, sorry? Do you guys still have a hit set shirts on sale, like day one, ten, all those? Yeah, if you look on if you look on, on, on the gear.com, you can find hit set Alexander Roth and Kieran Crops the merchandise, all the different packages, all available right now on the gear.com. I will put the link for that down in the description below, so make sure guys you click on that, buy your shirt, support the hit set, and Make sure you wear those to all the shows in 2021. Hopefully, everything's back to normal, so then you can all be wearing <laughs> yeah, your pitch set shirts to go see them live. It's going to be 2021, trust me. Yeah, but yeah. At this rate, I think it, that's probably the best thing they can do. Like, literally, wait till next year before anything opens. Yeah, and I hate you still. But yeah, so. Alright, so since this is the first podcast, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end it with a, like, maybe a final question. But. Again, thank you guys for coming on. And I'll no make worries, sure bro. I'll put a link down for your T-shirts, merchandise, all that down below. So, guys, <coughs> one last thing. <laughs> all right. So, obviously, we've known each other for a long time. Yeah. So, I think you guys deserve to be on almost all the shows. What message would you give to uh, promoters who don't know who you are? Like, introducing yourselves. What how like how is best to describe you both and why should someone book you? Hello, we are the hit set and Black Lives Matter. Hello, we are the hit set. If you want a show, you got a show. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> True. All right, fair play. Very straightforward answer there. I was not expecting I mean, that. It's, it's simple, bro. You know what I mean? It's, we're wrestlers, we wrestle. If you're going to see a wrestling show, no matter what we do, but the message is always going to be Black Lives Matter. True. Wolf of Broad Street, Civilized Citizen. He's Alexander Roth. I'm Kieran Corrupt. We're hit. We're a set. We're a hit set. And the theme song goes, tell them don't waste our time. Well, tell them to waste my time. But on this note, <laughs> on this time, man, tell them to waste our time. You know what I mean? True. And my, my thoughts are my thoughts very wrong right now. During this, during, during this, during 2020. If you're struggling, our thoughts are with you. Trust me, fam. We understand. Been a bit of a shite year at the moment, so everyone stay strong. Hope you've That's enjoyed it. the video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and make sure you check out the hit set. Make sure you check out Alexander Roth and Kieran Corrupt on Facebook, on YouTube, whichever platform they are on. So, guys, thank you for watching. Subscribe, click the bell icon, and click the like button as well. And let me know who you want next. We have one or two guests lined up next. So, if you want to shout, 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 shout out to Chris Murphy as well for making us his first guest. He probably didn't know what he was going to serve him to, so don't fault him for it. Uh, <laughs> Miles and Bay Master that seems to be the trend. But yeah, no, thank you for inviting us to your podcast. Yeah, exactly, guys. So, guys, if you want a part two, let me know in the comment section down below and we'll go more in depth conversation next if you guys want more. So, thank you for watching, guys, and peace out. Then I'ma take it to the head like I don't know what And pray to God that I don't know what